Today we have Sherry Long with Sugar and Spice, former school teacher, now self-employed business owner, just living out her dreams, making the best peanut butter balls here in all of Nevada. Welcome to Slay in Your Lane with Sherry Long, a resident here in Lake Las Vegas too, actually. Thanks for having me, I'm glad to be here. Yes. listeners here in on how you got started with the industry I mean how you really kind of made that pivot moving from a secured teacher position to then going off and launching your own business yeah kind of kind of a strange connection there um, I was in education for almost 25 years and my last four and a half years I was working with at-risk high school youth that were um, in an alternative high school and teacher program. And I was out of the classroom and I was working with these kids to help find them housing, to assist with um, the finding jobs, to further their education. I had partnerships with credit union institutions, how to set up bank accounts, just life skills. Counselor, almost. Yeah, uh, almost. I, I mean, I wasn't there at the counselor, but I was, I was their advocate in, in a sense. And what I discovered while I was working with these kids is that Probably about 85% of them were foster youth that had aged out of the system. So one day they're 17, the next day they're 18, and you're on your own, you're an adult, go make it happen. And it was just devastating. So this teacher side hustle was going on while I was working with these kids, and then fast forward, we moved to Nevada, and I just decided I did not want to be in with the educational system in Nevada. Um, and I, I turned the side hustle into a full-time endeavor and I now hire those kids. Oh, that's those are those are the kids that I want. I want those those kids that need guidance, that need help, that need employment. And they're great kids. They just they're kind of left to their own devices. So I work with Employee Nevada and that's my only requirement is that they are foster youth that had reached out of the system and are while he you're by trade, he started out as a teacher, but there was so much more to your calling that maybe you didn't know and it, it it came to surface why because tell us the story how you actually came up with the recipe when you first tried a peanut butter ball of or a light and you went out and then you searched the ingredients and it was like nothing like what what yeah. the, what you had originally tried you know the best mistakes or the or the best accidents sometimes come to be the most amazing things I uh, attended a friend's wedding and she had these incredible peanut butter balls at her wedding and I thought I, I want to try and make these and so um, I was in our local supermarket and I called her and she wasn't there and I thought okay well I'll just grab what I think was in this recipe I don't know and I literally was pushing a cart just throwing things in my head <laughs> just what I thought was in there. We got home, made these things that turned into more like peanut butter blobs than balls but they tasted really good and um, she called me like later that night, like way later that night and said, hey, I just got your message, do you, do you want the recipe? And I was like, I'm done. And she gave it to me anyways and I was like, okay, I didn't buy that, I didn't include that. Oh, I didn't know that was in it. And so they just sort of came to be. <laughs> the bird, that's amazing. And yeah, that's incredible. And you said that took place during what time period? That was 2017 in Southern California and I would uh, I had finished my master's degree and I remember being in Hill Moon. Um, what do I do with myself? You know, I'm, I'm done with school, I have no studying, I have no midterms, no exams, and what, what do I do with myself? And I just started baking. Wherever I happened to be going, I just kind of dropped dreams to people. And the peanut butter blobs at the time just became a hit. And people were like, oh my gosh, these are so good, you should sell these, you know, what? what you so, and sort of just evolved from there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best way I would describe those things is if Nutter Butter, I think, had a baby with Butterfinger and they collided because when I first tried it, they look like truffles. Now you look different than they taste. They, they're really soft um, and they're not too sweet. Very delicate. They're nice. Um, they make great gifts too. So for any realtors, 
uh, anyone for housewarming, girl night, any night. Uh, I think it's just having some of those if you don't know what to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turning to these. But tell us about the name, the sugar and spice. So obviously there's sugar in it. Is there spice or how did you come up with that? Yeah, it's good to see these. Um, there actually, there is an added sugar. There's sugar in the peanut butter and there's sugar in the chocolate, but I don't add any additional sugar. Nice. So um, yeah. Um, the name is kind of funny. Um, I was doing, I was baking and doing all these treats and he, my husband makes a bean salsa and um, it's got a lot of flavor, but it's like a burn your head off salsa, <laughs> <laughs> but people love it. And so we would always joke and be like, oh, I'm the sugar, you're the spice, you know, and, and that was kind of how it came to be. And um, the sugar went on and made it happen and the spice still just does it in our kitchen for parties. <laughs> I mean, that's, um, but yeah, that was, so there's no spice in the chocolate. And I, I actually, I never thought about that, but I, I think some people might get, oh, what's this chocolate with spice? And, but um, yeah, that was sort of just happened on its own organically. The name kind of came from you. So you, got, you, you let your husband be a part of this kind of brand if you would. Yes, our, our, my, my very first logo, you know, we've rebranded and, and kind of played around with different logos, packaging and whatnot. And my very first logo, the middle of it, had an S and a J for Sherry and John in it. And then it was replaced with the skyline. Yes. <laughs> so. And because where can people find these sugar and spice peanut butter bottles? So right now we are in... Vegas and Reno, and uh, we're places in Northern Nevada. Um, I'd love to get me off in the place of Vegas. I was under the impression that you weren't going out of state just yet due to the maybe temperature control, but you figured that out or oh, were you able to overcome sister, that? Sister, I have mastered should be like you. no other. I am, yeah, no, no, I am yeah, the crazy person no, who starts a chocolate business in July in the hottest part of our whole country and then learns to ship it out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it goes on. Um, thermo packs and thermo packing and two day FedEx. And it, it, it arrives as it should. I mean, I, it's, it's nerve wracking, you know, and I did a lot of trial and error sending it to friends saying, video when you open it up so I can see what it looks like. And I want to make sure it's not soup. And, uh, but yeah, we, so I do ship out everywhere from the website, uh, sugar and spice, Las Vegas .com. Small but mighty. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I really like how you mentioned that you made your way out to the Reno market and there's there's definitely on a, on a selfish level a desire for me to open say a coffee shop and I was well, let's do it right <laughs> and so having local distributors like yourself supply this inventory because I'm the nut to level up our community and, and, and help in that regard so how can people I guess reach out to you and, and is that a wholesale price or how do you arrange that partnership with local vendors, coffee shops, restaurant, mom and pop, restaurants, you know, these locations. Right. Um, yeah, it's wholesale pricing. I do I, retail pricing on the website and the it's website pricing um, and for, for retail locations. And I do in bulk pricing. Um, T-Mobile just made it a large order for their for their lounges and they you know bulk pricing and um, so um, so yeah you know I mean there's different. so all that information's on your website um the the wholesale pricing is not on the website but definitely you know I can be contacted you can send over some price points okay um yeah and then I I'm I'm working with some local organizations as a workforce development site with um the, to the academic foundation and empower us uh, to autism again and the young adults with disabilities. And they come in and learn to package and, and food handling. And uh, um, so, yeah, we've got a lot of product we need to get out because <laughs> they're coming in and making it, and I need to push it out. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have all these kids in my kitchen now, and I, I just joke that the classroom was sort of morphed into a large commercial kitchen space at this point. So, Fine. I'm uh, always looking for. Um, relocations to your wholesale out to be because we've got a lot of production and we just want to keep them moving. And on that note, I think you've been a little modest uh, with us being in the backyard of Lake Las Vegas where the Super Bowl hosted the teams to lodge, if you would. You were also able to partake in a lot of the festivities that they were having. Please tell us like how you were able to be in that spotlight and sponsor. I mean, that that's that's it takes a lot of 
to your point, I mean, leading us to where you are, I hope you take a moment and really reflect that too. Sure. That was definitely um, the opportunity of a lifetime. They had uh, put out um, a request for small businesses over a year ago um, for their supplier guide. And I, being certified as a woman-owned business and a small business enterprise, I, I get them student sent to me um, through certification from Harry Reid Airport. And they sent this to me, submit, and see, you know, well, what is this? Okay, sure, sure I'll, this I'll do this. It took a place a year ago. It was, in it was about a year ago, okay. yeah. And um, I'm, I'm just a throw it to the wind and see what, what happens. So I'll, I'll fill anything out. What do you have to lose? So, You're a self-employed. Right, this is what we do. Right. <laughs> so that's what I did. I filled it out. And it was just, a, at first it was an initial application. And then they contacted me and said, you made it through the first step. And I said, oh, there's steps in this process. And, um, they asked me to come to a pitch. Um, and in the meantime, I sent samples to the uh, Business Connect um, uh, BJ Waymer and uh, David Waymer, who ran the program, and I had sent samples to them. And so I did my pitch, and I think it was like, I'm gonna say it was like eight individuals that I had to talk in front of, and I shared about the business and what we do, and just the, the, the connotation that food has. You know, you remember food, and you remember events with food, and, um, and they then narrowed down those 700 businesses from the initial application and the pitching to 200. And those 200 went into a supplier guide and it was given to all of the uh, businesses and the host committee. I believe it was the night, probably like before the Super Bowl, the host committee uh, had a party for 6,000 media that had come into town for the event. They liked the meter butter balls better than the marshmallows. And the last um, raw of, of the Whole business connect program before Super Bowl, they wrapped it off two tickets. One, wow! <laughs> so that was just the experience of a lifetime. It was just exciting. It was very exciting. Yeah, you know, in any situation, as a self-employed business owner, entrepreneur starting out, ground up, there's a lot of fear. A lot of people are hesitant to take that leap of faith, like you did. And at the same time, you followed your passion, whether it was a, a matter of wanting to make peanut butter balls or providing that opportunity to help students and these young individuals with the employment, right? So I, while we understand that nothing comes easy and it's taken years of just consistency, what, what would you say one of your biggest challenges were with opening sugar and spice? You know, my challenges change. I mean, it, it's, it's always, I had somebody ask me once, what's the first thing you hire for? And it's always whatever I'm doing at that point in time. <laughs> you know, right now it's, you know, trying to get things out of state with logistics and trucking and temperature to fall. Like I need somebody that can do it with the logistics of transportation. And, you know, so it's always, the challenges change. You know, they're, they're constant, well, they're constantly new and it's just sort of, you know, getting over that hurdle and, and um, and then it's on to something, you know, it's on to something else. And I, I, I think I've, maybe it's the teacher in me, I don't know, I'm, I'm the eternal learner. Um, and I feel like everybody that I encounter is just an expert in their field, you know? And so the day that the FedEx rep called me and said, I'm your business rep, what can I do for you? I was like, oh! Life you know? Life. You're like, I know what you're going to do. my master. Ball for me and tell so, me how to do it. Yes. <laughs> so um, I think that the challenges just change with whatever I'm facing at that point in time. Um, and I, I've just had to figure it out, you know, along the way. You're a woman of faith. I think when you and I first met, it was through Bunkle, for those that don't know, that aren't big gamblers in Vegas. But, hey, it does, it does involve a little bit of rolling dice. I want to friends. I made groups so I can meet friends. <laughs> and you shared your story, and I thought it was just really remarkable. But you also introduced me to the community that I've been really involved with, which is Central Church. And I don't want to get too much into that. But, you know, I think that has a lot to do with believing in the man upstairs and just believing in yourself, right, to get this far. And I think to your point, you've overcome every obstacle. 
you're only getting stronger, one and cooler. And I love to hear that and just be around individuals like yourself. So that to me, I think hopefully inspires anyone out there that is looking to go out and pursue whatever it is that lights them up internal because it's doing so much more than no one knew. So I want to just kind of wrap up. What now? What's your goals for the next five years? Um, Kiwi Life Goal, since the day I started, it's been Starbucks. <laughs> I have, I just, and I know a girl. I, <laughs> I just have always felt like the chocolate and the coffee just go well together. I've always had my sight set on Starbucks. I was listening to uh, Mel Robbins the other day. And one of the things that Jamie from It Cosmetics said, is she said, you are not crazy. Um, she said, but you could be first. And um, sometimes I, I, I think my goal at Starbucks is so big and so out there and I'm just little old me. And then I think I'm not crazy. I'll just be first. <laughs> no, um, there's 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 a lot of things at Starbucks that they have that you can definitely there's a there's some shelf life for you there. Yeah, girl. there's a real estate space for sure. <laughs> there is, and, and and I've been very blessed that my my designer is one of my best friends from college. And at one point, my son sent me a picture of their little thing right by the registry. He said, "Mom, your boxes would look so good right here." And I sent it to my friend. Jen and she photoshopped it in and said, Look, there it is right there. That's it starts, with the, like. it that's right. starts with the vision. That's right. That's right. right. Um, so, so uh, yeah, I mean, where do I see myself in five years? That's always been my, my big goal. I'll make that um, a year goal. That's easy. Yeah, that's totally yeah. unattainable. Um, you got the right staff, and I think that goes back to the whole thing. The Lord is, is presenting to you, putting people in front of you that's going to help you get there. And Vegas has been so good for small business. I mean, it's for a small little town, you know, and it's been very supportive of small business. Um, I agree. But I would love to get at beyond this one by the baby. I feel like there's so many more coffee shops all over the U.S. Uh, we're opening it up for the universe. In. Well, for those that are watching, this is how the package looks like for the four pack. And I actually wanted to, to, to notate that when you said, I, I had a girlfriend, Jen, which you've met. She had tried these for the first time. And she was astonished when she met you because she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that that's how the box looked. But when she recognized the ball, right? <laughs> she's like, to your point about association and just how when you try something, the memories and the, it, that all really brings you back. So sometimes you just need to see it. So if you see these on the shelf, give it a try. I sell well, these in four packs and in 12 packs. Right. And they can range... Um, they're, well, the, the, the city's crazy, you know, like they're, they're five ninety nine at a, at an independent coffee shop and they're ten ninety nine at, you know, the airport. Yes. Um, so yeah. But totally worth it. I mean, re really good quality. Go out and grab you a box for your next party or just to have and they're on all platforms. You heard how you guys can find them. Sugar and Spice Las Vegas. Thank you so much, Sherry, for joining us today. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for having me.